So we are trying to address the problem of organ shortage. And um, the basic notion is, can we literally bioprint using 3D printers living human tissue? Liver disease um, impacts about 500 million people uh, worldwide, 2 million deaths every year. Um, its rates are rising rather than falling, and so it's becoming an emerging um, clinical problem more and more. Complex organs like the liver perform tons and tons of functions, okay? So the liver, for example, performs about 500 functions, maybe second only to brain. And so there's no machine or therapy that could replace all of those functions. We, in working with Jordan Miller's lab at Rice University, he's sort of bringing a lot of biomaterial chemistry expertise, um, ha have been um, developing sort of next generation printable materials that can support functional human cells and can be 3D printed. We are thinking, what if we could take the biological cellular components that you know would be in your liver and then 3D print them into a new liver, and that might be essentially serve as essentially your 3D printed living machine that could replace, be transplanted into a patient to either replace those functions or bridge a patient to transplant until they can get a liver. Right here, we have a liver lobule construct that we used for, to implant into mice, uh, into our liver injury model. And you can see the red dye, which I've injected into these channels, outlines the biomimetic vascular structure. Uh, if you look right above that, you might see some horizontal structures. These are printed what we refer to as staples, uh, and they're very useful for adhering <laughs> our printed gel, or our cast gel containing hepatocytes, into our bioprinted matrix. Oh, yeah. Literally all we did was tweak the chemistry um, that people have been using for decades actually um, in the tissue engineering community and regenerative medicine community by adding a food dye. And that simple tweak in the chemistry enabled us to 3D print living human tissues that have really extraordinary structural complexity compared to what the field has been able to do previously. And some of the other studies that we've done, and this is where my lab has been um, played the most central role, is to actually embed um, living cells into the structures as we print them. Um, and um, we've been able to do that with liver cells called hepatocytes, um, and we've been able to show that they survive that printing process and that they retain at least one um, of liver's 500 functions. So in other words, we'll have to do much more extensive and involved studies to assess really how good are our bioprinted tissues, what can we do um, in order to make them better, and that will take a number of years before we get there. But, um, but this sort of progress that we've made puts us in a new place, and I think that all of a sudden those studies are possible, where before maybe they weren't as possible.